If you could name your kid after any country, what would it be? Turkey. Tanzania. Greece. <laughs> what is happening? Man, I was very excited to do this podcast. That answer just went in so many different directions. No, let's not get into that. But no, let's get into it. Who do you think you are, Drake? Naming your... <laughs> Naming your uh, kid That's Greece. the worst name ever, dude. No, actually, I, actually, it's not bad unless he gets the nickname Greasy. Yeah, if or he's something. Greasy, <laughs> yeah. Greece dude, is a like... Greece is a fire name. What? It just it's, it it correlates with the food Greece, and like during the lunchroom, he's gonna get bullied. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yo, what's That's... up, Greece? What? Like, uh, there's the basketball player who goes by the Greek Freak. And it's like a fire nickname. So as a name, Greece, I'm down with it. Tanzania, <laughs> I'm not sure. Tanzania's fire. Tanzania Khan? Tanzania or, Khan, that's kind of... That's pretty cool. That kind of goes. Or, or, like, or like Zambia or like Ibiza. Like, any of the Z ones sound cool. Amber wants the exotic. Like, oh. <laughs> exotic. You, Amber wants like the stripper name. Honestly, on brand. <laughs> not- wait, 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 no, sorry, sorry. I meant about the exotic said, stuff, not the... He said on brand. Not the... Stri- I, yeah, sorry, Amber, well, just, yeah, just name your kid Magic City. Well, I'm, uh, uh, yeah. I'm so sorry, I did not mean so, that. Uh, no, he, the truth comes out. The truth comes out. Greece has confirmed. Greece Senior has confirmed. <laughs> There's something about names with Zs that are just so fun. <laughs> I agree like, with you. I like uh, I like a nice Z in the name, a nice like, zinger. Yeah. Growing up, I wanted to name uh, my daughter Aliza, and then it switched to Aziza when I read The Thousand Splendid Sons or whatever. But yeah. What, and now it's you, Zaziza. Now it's just Zaziza. Zebra. Why don't you name her Z- Zebra? Zebra. Mine is, you, mine is similar to a zebra. It's an animal. It's a turkey. Imagine. Wh- a turkey. So why would you do that? Cause, <laughs> hey, turkey. <laughs> hey, little <laughs> turkey. <laughs> A little turkey just gobbling around. <laughs> Dude, that's okay. not cute. Don't okay, do that to your kid. <laughs> it was either gonna be turkey or hungry. So why? You you just like looking Dude, at one part of the is, world. Dude, why is why is ours uh, related to food? <laughs> what do you mean? Greece. Oh, I mean Greece. <laughs> Greece. That's not the first thing I think of because I don't know why you're giving it such a like a bad Dude. thing because I feel like the first thing I think of is the country and just. Like, Greek mythology and all of that is is so fire. So like having Greece in your name, I don't know. If my name was if it was Greek, that'd be better. But Greece, I don't know. Just relates. I could have also went with Chad. Chad is a good one. Chad, Just normal, oh, regular Chad. <laughs> but no, no, no. See that takes the fun out of it. I'm surprised that nobody went with like the normal like. Well, what I guess Pakistan? Asia's content. No, not <laughs> Pakistan. But like you know, like. Kenya and like some people uh, being in like Asia and like I don't know. I know yeah. Asia's yeah. a continent, but still. Italy. I'm aware. Italy. Italy. There's oh. a lot of uh Russia. Russia would be kind of a cool Rome. one. Rome. Rome. Australia. But that's not that's not a <laughs> Aust- Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of countries that sound like countries and then there's some that are like what if you were like Chile? That'd be Chile. a cool one. Ooh, That's Chile. fire. That's fire. Brazil. I, Chile. Br- uh, Brazil's cool. Brazil's really cool. Again, the Z's. Z's Brazil Khan. Cool. Yeah, but you would want to be. <laughs> but like, don't name your child. Person. Don't name your child like Norway. You know. Norway is cool. Norway's kind of fire. If that way, if you don't have a, Norway. <laughs> if you don't have like Greenland, a, like it's like Northwest. Like you Northwest, can't have land Norway. in it. Land is where you're drawing yeah. a serious line. Because if you're, if you're just going to be Ice, this Greenland. is Greenland and that's Iceland. They're twins. Like, I think all these uh, names are fire if you don't have like a brown last name. Like yeah. Most yeah, of them sure. <laughs> I, like yeah. How you're, okay, well, I like how you're lining them all up with Khan as if my kid's last name is going to be my last name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because that's also like a very... Uh, you know, popular common last name, name. So common name. Yeah. yeah. That uh that question actually came from our good friend Jai Poppy uh on uh Instagram. So Shout he was on Jai the Poppy, podcast recently. But he, he always has he always has great uh questions like that. Yeah. He actually 
always uh always comes up with these awesome questions and i'm like bro i'm using this he's like go ahead <laughs> so shout out chai poppy shout out chai poppy thank you guys for tuning into an episode of strange flavors my name is shimmer i'm for us my name is amber and this is the strangest and greatest podcast in the game and this is also brought to you by a theory you can email Sorry. us cool things like very cool things like cool questions or oh. for a while we haven't had this in a while but relationship advice we used to do those and we had a lot of fun with those yeah. horrible advice we'd be <laughs> well out. we gave horrible advice but it's still funny uh so please send us relationship advice um no no not send us relationship advice but like send us <laughs> questions but maybe you. also that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe need that too <laughs> and then you can also send Honestly. us your music uh, at strangeflavorspodcast at gmail.com only if it's your cousins stop it stop and uh, you can however tell your cousins that you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts Spotify and anywhere else and guys I'm so sorry I slacked today with the background but you brought yeah. back the farting earth the farting earth is back but so is my little morning deep voice <laughs> oh my god even though it's, it's not morning the only, it's, it's not morning but <laughs> The only time that he has a deep voice. <laughs> the only time. It it's actually nice, high key like a. It's it's actually high key a great time to um, uh, hey, be yes. doing a podcast or like recording. Yeah, because it's like cause the podcast have, like voice. It's like the hey guys, welcome. Hey guys. You are, and then you, with the background you have, it's like welcome to welcome. the greatest podcast on earth. The strangest and greatest podcast. Amber, do you like uh, morning voices on guys? Um, I mean, I think like deep raspy voices are cool. Okay. So me. Huh? So me. So, no. So me. Your voice isn't that deep or raspy. Right now it is. Well, okay. Do you have your morning voice on? I can't tell. I can't tell with the Zoom quality. I don't know. Okay. You guys are. Why would you have morning? I don't, I've literally been awake since seven a.m. I like, think I'm. I think doing? I'm stuck in a morning voice for my whole life because I don't get enough sleep, so it's just <laughs> always on. <laughs> but yes, uh, that was regarding watching us on youtube because you can find us on youtube and we're also all over social media uh we won't have morning voices on social media but uh facebook instagram on twitter uh at strange flavors and if you'd like to be an executive producer on this podcast like our great executive producer our two-time executive two producer two-time wow. executive producer bobber bagel wow amazing shout out two time two-time champ Two-time champ, he's holding it for the squad. Um, you can he's support- He's holding it down for all the audience members. The whole audience. Uh, you can support this podcast. There will be a link down below. And also, uh, we have recently launched a Patreon for our cultural comedy channel at ronopole.com. Yes. And, and we've already gotten um, over $100 a month being put in by our patrons, which is incredible. That is crazy. So, that is crazy. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for already uh, doing that. You know, we can't wait to show you the things that we'll be able to do with, with uh, you know, uh, that sort of extra uh, money coming in, uh, whether it be for our productions or, uh, you know, things that you want to see us do. Um, and always we're, we're continuing to put the merch out there on uh, our website, which all of that is linked in the description if you want to find any of that. So today is going to be an exciting episode. Um, I'm super but, excited. And it's going to be with somebody who, uh, you know, uh, has been all over the world. But I wanted to say something uh, about that real quick. So sometimes I like going on uh, chat roulette or like Omegle and just talking to people, especially during uh, what's it called? The whole court. Like a lot of people are still quarantined in countries around the world. So. Mm -hmm. I'll just like chat with different people, see, you know, uh, what it's like in their situation and stuff. And recently uh, I was doing it and I actually ran into this Argentinian uh, huge singer. Oh, and wow. I didn't I didn't know like if it was real or not. But when I went in, he goes, uh, he was just like messing around. He's like, oh, how are you? And he's just like, I was like, oh, where are you from? Because uh, he had an accent. And he was like, I'm from blah, 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 blah. And that's what he was doing. And I was like, uh, okay, how is it over there? He's like, it's uh, blah, 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 blah. And I was like laughing really hard because it was just like really funny. And then he goes, he, this guy in the back, he's like, do you know who he is? 
And I was like, no. And then he's like, look up this name. And then he told me, and his name is Gustavo Cerati. And uh, I was like, okay. I look it up. Wait, and it's no literally way. him. Wait, you know him? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's huge though if you look him up like he has millions of uh fans and views like everywhere and then i looked up like his live concert and there's like this endless crowd uh that he's performing in front of and i was like what are you doing on chat roulette <laughs> and he was just like i am bored i am in quarantine <laughs> it's like I was like, you live pretty humble, like pretty humble. Uh, he's like, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I have mansion in America. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, he started bringing out all his plaques to show me. And he was showing me like all his uh, stuff for his songs. And then he was showing me his uh, YouTube plaques as well. You know, like the million subscribers and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He he was bringing out all of that. I was like, what the heck? What are the odds? But it was really cool because... Uh, I, I ended up actually asking him, I was like, do you want to come on our podcast? And he was like, ah, uh, what is this? And I, his like manager, whoever was there, tried to explain it to him. He's like, uh, I am embarrassed. I know speak English good and stuff. I was like, oh, oh man. But he was like, he's like, no, I follow you. I follow you. And then he's like, what is your name? <laughs> and then I told him and he's like, he's going through like YouTube. He's like, ah, long hair. Good. Very, very handsome. Like Jesus Christ. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I follow you. I listen to it. you make music. I listen to it. I was like, okay. But this dude is like, literally he's super famous and he's just like, okay. He doesn't care that it's just like, okay, this guy has like a couple thousand views or something, but it was just so That's interesting cool. That's awesome. meeting this guy. And then I ran into this guy who was uh, from Mexico. He was like a doctor and uh, he was describing his Gosh, situation. You talk to a lot of random guys online. Is, should we be I concerned to, about this? Well, I do, that in, I do that in real life. That's how I get a bunch of our guests in the first place. That's but I haven't been question. able to do that in a while. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my question. <laughs> it's the same thing, but now it's online. I've done it while Shamir was there before too, and this like lady, I forget where she was. Yeah. She was just um, talking to me for like half an hour about just like, she was um, an emotional mess. She yeah. was just like, I don't know how much I can take, but it's just so interesting that like, it it like, uh, what do you call it? It just like fills me up um, spiritually, yeah. just speaking to people and hearing I, totally different perspectives. I just troll on there, but it does feel good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, trolling, there's always... There. And also, like, it sucks that, like, you have to get through a bunch of, like, naked dudes to, <laughs> to find these people. But it's not as bad anymore because there is an option now that you can just have, like, clean. Yeah. Which, like, some people still kind of disrespect that. But overall, there's a lot of people that are just, like, wanting to talk. And especially people that are in different parts of the world. In America, we get exposed to... Uh, if you allow yourself to, you can get exposed to a lot of different people of different backgrounds but in other countries you know that's kind of all they see so um you know it's it's something that's fun to me and it gives me a lot of perspective and understanding and sometimes and I, this dude from mexico i got his email i was like yo i'm gonna hit you up when i go there because <laughs> it's like you never know yeah. it's easy being a guy i guess um you don't have to worry about a lot of uh creepy stuff going on but so what i'm hearing is you didn't get this famous dude for our podcast for failed us. mission uh if he if he if he likes uh what i'm making then maybe uh we get a collaboration out of it <laughs> and then he comes on the podcast or we co we go and stay at his place in argentina like who knows either, either way it'll be worth it <laughs> yeah um but we actually have a guest on here today who uh has similar experiences of talking to people around the world and teaching it to his classrooms so the stranger today is actually uh amber's high school english teacher Yes. He was uh, he was stuck uh, studying uh, or teaching abroad uh, in China when the whole coronavirus pandemic broke out. He teaches abroad in uh, many different countries and travels a lot. So during this whole pandemic, he was kind of stuck there and, and talking about it on Facebook and describing, you know, the kind of situation he was in, what yeah. was going on around him uh, and, and the rest of the country, what the government was and wasn't telling them. And then on top of that, uh, you know, his frustrations with Americans and the way that we're handling it. 
Uh, but besides that, you know, he's a yeah, really cool guy. He talks to us about his teaching philosophies that he's picked up during all of his traveling experiences. So uh, really a uh, fun guest. Stay tuned. Uh, sit back and enjoy the whole episode. Uh, today's stranger is Kevin Shea, a.k.a. Mr. Shea. All right. So Mr. Shea is in the building. Not in the building, but in his own building. And we're all <laughs> in our own buildings. The virtual building. How are you doing, Mr. Shea? Doing great. Thanks for having me here today. Yeah, <laughs> welcome back to the U.S. It's been a, it's been be a hot here. minute since you've been back, right? <laughs> Ooh, 11 months. Oh, wow. man. oh dang. And uh, reuniting with your wife? That was great. Yeah, no doubt. So you haven't seen her in a minute, too? We, uh, we, had, been fifth, we had been five months almost without seeing each other. Wow. Wow. And wait, so you just came back yesterday? No, I came back Wednesday night. Okay. How was that when you when you saw each other? Was it like... It was awesome. Tiring. Yeah. 40, 40 hours <laughs> trip to get here, but it was worth it. Wow. You missed your anniversary just by a few days too, right? Yeah, that was on the 6th. Oh. That's when I was, was it uh, shocking to be? Was it shocking to be back in America? It was nice after so many failed attempts, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the whole reason is because you were actually in China during the whole uh, virus uh, pandemic, and uh, we'll get into that. But before that, I mean, let's talk about how you, how we know you. So you were actually yeah. Amber's teacher, right? Yeah, I, I worked at a special needs school for slow children. And, um, <laughs> oh, she, my she God. Was, she was probably my the hardest case I ever had and a lot of work. Her freshman year were the worst three years of my life, but oh um, my I really, really persevered and made something out of her, and I'm proud of that. <laughs> wow. That's, oh, wow. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I yes. really appreciate you taking all the time and effort to teach me the alphabet. Ooh. Anything I could do. Anything I could do. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, no. Amber was in an honors English class, going to college, smart girl. Always was, always will be. Wait, are you sure it was honors? <laughs> it wasn't. It was regular English. I don't was, know. Um, it was, I told it was, her. I it was regular English my 11th grade year, I think. American literature. Yes. yes. Wow. Amber, did you learn anything? I did. Honestly, like, English was my favorite subject throughout, like, mm. all, like, throughout school altogether and through college. Like, that was, like, my favorite class. So, like, his class was, like, the only class I was probably getting a B in. Like so I didn't ruin it for her. And not because you were easy, but because you were, are a super passionate teacher. But um, I do remember something, and I, and I want to ask you right off the bat. You used to say, you used to yell a nickname yell. at me. At, a nickname at me yes. every single time. A Amber Conby and Fitch. Yeah, but like, so you used to oh, say that's it pretty in, good. You used to say it Amber in a certain Com voice. You used to be like, Amber Conby and Fitch. Well, it depends if you disappointed me, like if your homework was late or something, then, then you got the voice. Yeah. <laughs> the voice. <laughs> the voice. That's awesome. That's true. Um, well, from that point to, uh, were you teaching in China? Is that what ended up happening, how you got there? Well, I, I decided to leave teaching in America and I took up teaching internationally. And I've taught in a lot of places. I taught in Jakarta, Indonesia, and um, Beirut, Lebanon, and in Mexico for a few years. And now it's just in China. Oh, wow. What made you want to do that? Um, you know, students like Amber. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got you to gotta go and teach in uh, Kashmir. In the in I, I would love to. I would love to go. As a matter of fact, I was looking at a job in Pakistan, this last job, but my wife was too afraid. I was trying to convince her how safe and wonderful it is, but she, uh, she wasn't having any of it. But almost. Yeah. Well, I mean, after you... Uh, deal with living in China during COVID. I'm pretty sure you could handle anything at you this point. You could do point. anything at this point. Not yeah. sure if she can, but yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you were teaching in China during COVID. What was um, what was that kind of like? Like, what was the initial like outbreak like? What, how was that day to day type thing as well, it started? Well, it was weird for us because no one else in the world had it. It was just in China. <laughs> And China was all messed up, and like it was in every state or we call province. Where were you in city. China? You weren't I was in, in Wuhan, the right? No, I was the next state over Zhangjie. So okay. we're connected. So pretty close. Two, two hour train ride to okay. uh, Wuhan. Yeah. So like, but what again, was that initial sort of 
break. We were awfully close. We were awfully close. So we were worried about that, obviously. And and then all the travel got rescinded and we got ordered to shelter in place back in January. So January, February, March, I mean, it wasn't happening anywhere else in the world. And we were locked in our little apartment. So it was kind of crazy. What did you guys hear about it? Was it the same bat soup story or? We got a lot of bat soup and, you know, U.S. conspiracies and other conspiracies, but generally it's the bat soup theory from the wet market there in Wuhan, yeah. Was it uh, surreal at first when, like, you were first hearing about it? you're expecting it to blow over. I remember, like, I posted on January 25th that we had a lot of food and water. We were hoping it was going to be gone in a couple of weeks, you know. That was a long time ago. So, so you actually started stocking up right, right when that first type. Kind of had was to happening? because all the bigger grocery stores started closing their doors. Only the little markets were open, and you're like, "Well, I'd rather have extra than not enough." And at this point, were you allowed to go anywhere, or was like you were you not allowed to go in like restaurants? One person per, per family per household could leave every other day for up to two hours. But how do they? Yeah. How were they tracking that? Um, the apartment complex had these day passes that they would only give out, you know, when you came down to exit. There was always a police officer and a security officer for health there at, at the entrance of every apartment complex. And so they check your ID and they can, you know, they mark down when you leave. And when they come back late, they yell at you. But uh, what are they going to do? Not let you in. Mm. Did they have the same like guidelines, like wear a mask and like six feet and stuff? Had to wear a mask. Yeah, there was definitely all those things were pioneered in China and it really worked for a while. And then I don't know, it started to come back. It looks like. So when did you feel like it like really started to take a turn? Like, okay, we should really be taking this seriously. I sent my wife home in the middle of February because it got so bad. We were locked in the apartment and she was afraid to leave because she couldn't have left without me anyway. And uh, it was really people were yelling at us on the streets and things like that. And she got really scared. And so about a month after we hunkered down, I sent her home. I thought I'd be right behind her because China was really locking down. I just thought I'd stay and close up the apartment and get on the road behind her. But uh, my school kept trying to open. In so person saying, or online? Yeah, in person. They kept saying, we're going to try to open oh, in two wow. weeks. We're going to try to open in two weeks. And, you know, it was ridiculous, but I couldn't leave because of it. What was wow. the what was the government uh, sort of telling you, and where were you getting all your information from? Was there anything being um, held back from you? Probably. I mean, China tells you what you need to know, and that's it. You know, so there was some news from Beijing, the federal government, and the rest comes from Nanchang, my um, the, the capital of the the province where I lived. So we had province, we had provincial law, and then we had federal law sometimes trickling into. And it changed. You could go over to the next state and they wouldn't let foreigners into shopping areas, you know, because that state decided to make that rule. So, hmm. You were posting these like apocaly- apocalyptic type statuses while you were there kind of talking about your experiences. Was that your way of like artistically expressing what you were going on a daily basis or like letting your friends and family know what you're dealing with? A little of both because there was so little to do there. You know, when you're just trapped in that apartment, you guys found that out here in America. But when we were trapped in our apartments and everyone in America was out running around and saying, oh, it'll be over soon. It was kind of surreal. And and walking to the mall, walking everywhere and no cars in a city with millions of people. And you never saw anybody. It was kind of it was kind of crazy. I saw a post um, that you posted and it was like you were working out in your room and you ran like three miles and you were taking like 14 steps like that was was that was on my that was crazy that was in my um, (laughs) quarantine in Hong Kong and it was the biggest loop I could do was 14 steps and I would put my heavy backpack on and try not to count just try to walk you know try to let an hour go by and you were just that was your way of trying to like recreate a hiking situation just to get a little exercise a little something you know because you are trapped in that room that was a small room to be in for 14 days did you gain weight during these last few months? I always gain month? weight. I always gain weight because <laughs> people have beer and stuff, that, you know, the yummy stuff that makes you fat, but uh, <laughs> little. So you weren't allowed to like leave for, like for example, nope. in America, our situation here was like essential businesses. What was open during like the peak of all of this? <sighs> really nothing. I don't know what essential businesses would be. Only if it was open online. I mean, 
banks, everything was shut down. The small markets, what we would almost call like a 7-Eleven size market back in the States, those are like the little family markets. Those stayed open, but the big grocery stores, the medium stores, restaurants, everything closed. But the little markets were open to provide food and water and drinks to their neighborhoods. But that was it. I didn't see anything else open. Wow. Yeah, we had like liquor stores open here. We had... um, And it's essential. Yeah, Yeah, it's all (laughs) essential. Um, Well, speaking of that, um, you you made this post that you ended up deleting later. But it was almost kind of like like yelling at... I mean, it was supposed to be sarcastic, I guess. I don't know. You can kind of explain the intention behind it and what you said. Sure. yeah, like like you expressed your frustrations with Americans and how we were dealing with COVID here. Well, it was I, I got so much reaction. I got reaction from people I'd never heard of, and you know, my wife is on there, my family's on there. I don't like need bad reactions. Reading. Yeah, really stuff. You know, taking away the rights of the inalienable rights of America because oh their mother God. spread her legs and dropped a baby here in the forty eight <laughs> states. So all of a sudden, you can do anything you want, and I get it. You know, I was I was born an American, even though I was born in Germany. Um, I get the rights and I'm all for them, but, you know, certain rights, like I have the freedom of speech, but I can't go into a crowded theater and scream fire because in the ensuing chaos, somebody could get hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, I get it. I I have the freedom to go out and about and say what I want, but my not wearing a mask could actually hurt other people. And I I don't see a problem with wearing a mask, to tell you the truth. I I don't understand the, I have freedom, so I'm not going to wear a mask thing. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, tell, tell us what the status said and, and your thought process behind it, because I, well, I, I'm curious. I talked about how it, wor- how it worked, how they almost stopped it in China, but they stopped it doing things that we would never accept. I mean, we had tracking devices in our phones. Whenever we left our house, came into our house, went to any store, any shop, we were tracked with our phone. That way, if all of a sudden um, somebody came down with the virus, they could track and see where that person was. Well, that person was at this grocery store today. Then they can see everybody who is at the grocery store at the same time. So now you have a limited number of people that you need to test. But we were tracked everywhere, and uh, I, you know Americans just aren't going to be down with the police knowing. They would who you not. Are every that moment. would not fly yeah, here. At all. No chance. I can't even imagine if someone, if the government said, "Yeah, we're going to track your phones," there would be people. I mean, <laughs> it would be a war. It'd probably be a civil yeah, war, especially sure. in a state like I don't know, Florida. That would Oof. just. Yeah, where everybody just, owns a gun. Yeah, mm. that would not work. So, so, no. so, what was your like? Were, were you genuinely frustrated in that moment? That I was frustrated, complained? but the good thing was, is I knew I wasn't sick. I mean, from moment to moment, every time I would scan in somewhere, if it came up green, then I know where I had been recently. There have been no cases that I had not been exposed to it, even in tertiary form, because they they really track everybody. Yeah. What so do you it was think, a mixed, you know, mixed bag. What do you, I mean, what do you make of like the way that the U.S. has handled it, especially compared to what you experienced in China? Like um, Government and socially, I'm curious. Well, I say they really yeah. haven't handled it. When you think about it, there's really no mandate from the top from the federal government. And mm-hmm. the states are doing whatever they want. Some states are cracking down and saying, hey, we want this, we want that. And other states are, you can say, it's against the law to make people wear a mask. You know, it's, yeah. throw, you go from one border to another, it's absolutely crazy. Socially, um, I mean, it's the same thing. You have people who are taking it really seriously and who are trying to do the best they can not to and get the weakest part of our population, the elderly and the sick, trying, you know, not trying to get them sick. And then you have other people flaunting it and throwing parties and, you know, licking toilets and other insane things, you know, packing beaches and bars and going to parties to try to catch COVID. I mean, you, you hear these ridiculous things. I don't, I don't even know how to, how to handle that. It's still, I mean, even now, it's still sometimes I forget it's a thing because everyone is on such polar opposites of it. And it's like, why is, yeah. I, I don't understand how like this can even become like a political thing, you know? Yeah. Like we're divided amongst everything, it seems like in this Every country. single thing is completely left or right. And it's almost to the point where if you're on one side, you're an idiot because the other mm-hmm. side, that's what the other side, there's no middle ground anymore. Nobody understands. You're allowed to have your own opinion on every subject, but not not anymore. 
you wear the mask, then you're um, being controlled by the government. And exactly. You for yourself. And exactly. If you if you don't wear a mask, and, and that to them, it's like, oh yeah, because I don't wear a mask, I'm smart and I can think for myself. Or, you know, we are, we're like, okay, fine, give everybody COVID. So yep. yeah, like it's it's there's two like severe extremes and very few people in the middle. I feel like. Right. What was um towards the end um before you actually got to come back? What was the situation looking like then? Was everyone pretty much allowed well, to go they were opening back and up and restaurants had opened back up, but they had limited number of seating. Small restaurants still had their counter at the doorway. You could only order at the door and take away and things like that. But most stuff had opened up. They were getting ready to open movie theaters and things like that. But uh, they did that in Beijing. And within two weeks, they had a huge wave. And all of a sudden, anywhere you went in China, they were like, have you been in Beijing in the last 30 days? You know, if you said yes, they wouldn't have let you in. It got it got really ugly there. So it looks like it's gone, but not forgotten. And it looks like it can bounce back any time. Yeah. Do you know anything about like the damage it ended up doing to like the economy or anything? Or, like, people there's that there's you know? no real news you can have in China. Um, you know, like in America, I have friends mm-hmm. who own businesses that aren't working, had to lay off their entire staff and are living on savings. I mean, you assume that would be the same in China, too. There's so many people that have their own little mom and pop shops and things like that and nothing could open. But there are no new stats. No. I mean, according to the news, like only 4000 people died in China. What? Wow. Mm. You know, how is that even mathematically possible? That's yeah, insane. You know, we have hundreds of thousands of cases and millions of cases worldwide and half a million deaths and only 4,000 people died in the country where it was born and spread from corner to corner. You know, I, uh, you just can't believe the news from China. I don't know so, if most of your like friends and people surrounding you in China are like also foreigners uh, to China, but... What, were, were you guys upset about this, about the fact that the news isn't being, you know, reported properly and it's putting use in, in danger, I guess? We kind of knew that going in. I mean, you, you go into China and you understand certain things. You're not going to be on Facebook talking about what a horrible country it is or things like that unless you want to have a chat with some Chinese officials late one night in a dark room. And I, I don't. So I understand that they're my host country and I try to live within certain parameters of, of coolness. You know, I did. I posted way too much. I said a lot of things, and and I I was risking doing it, but uh, thought that was my risk do, to take. Do uh, Chinese people also like take the news like with a grain of salt as well? I don't think so, man. It's China number one in everything, you know. And God, I look. That's the way I grew up. Everyone's like, "Oh, America's number one," without telling you why or have ever having been to another country. You know, it's the same kind of jingoistic crap that every country feeds their children, I guess. But in China, it's it's a strong belief that China is number one in every measurable way, category, department, you name it. They were invented there, it or they perfected it. Were there other major sort of cultural differences that you noticed um, during your whole experience there? Well, they're very family oriented way more than the, the states are. And, you know, you have sometimes grandparents, great aunts and uncles all living with the family um, in an extended, you know, apartment type thing. And then the mother and the father and everybody of that age is working. And the grandparents and the great aunts and uncles take care of the next generation. And uh, that's something I like seeing because my mom and dad can both work. All the cousins, everybody of that age can work. And now the elderly people they retire and they take care of the, of the little ones. So you saw nuclear families everywhere. You mm-hmm. saw grandparents with little grandkids all the time. I kind of like that. I think that's an advantage having a bigger family. Yeah. That's kind of how it is in our culture. We're very family oriented in the same way. And like, yeah. you know, you have these uh, big houses back in like Pakistan where, you know, that's kind of everybody's working towards that. And, and the grandparents and the elders are just kind of like, there they take care of like the house and stuff and they're kind of like you mm-hmm. know the authority but uh they are definitely not working so right they did yeah, that that, that is kind of nice yeah i have to ask you uh how experimental were you in china in whether it be the food you ate or in places that you went <laughs> well food you eat sometimes you don't have a choice because you're looking at this menu and you're going through everything that you know is chicken and you're like wow chicken beaks chicken heads, chicken feet. You're like, damn, man. I mean, what about the middle parts? 
Uh, so so <laughs> sometimes, you know, pig lungs and duck heads and, and stuff, chicken feet are everywhere. Like in America, from the tiniest little place on the corner to a really nice restaurant, they're going to have chicken wings on the menu. In China, it's chicken feet, the whole damn claw, just the claw, no meat. Oh, wow. Fried, boiled, steamed, you you name it. Um, Is that even again, nutritious? As how can nutritious? it be? It's it just yeah. it's crunchy. <laughs> There's no meat or anything. And pig lungs, the first time I ordered pig lungs, I was like, I knew they were lungs because they look like inside out jelly bags, you know, and, and they're not even wow. cooked all the way through. And I, oh, this is a delicacy. And, you know, I ordered fish once and I got a giant fish head stuffed with fish eggs. No, the rest of the fish that I would eat wasn't there. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm- there's some scary shit, stuff, excuse me, to eat in China. <laughs> I'm always uh, I'm always curious on that, and maybe I'm like very ignorant to this, but um, like it's heard that like Asian people, uh, East Asian people, live really long lives, and then when I look at the food, I'm just like, man, I don't I don't know how that. I don't either. Look, possible. it's like I, when you're just eating steamed rice and some seaweed and little fish every day, yeah, you're gonna live well. But the the way the people who have money cook is with oil. I mean, everyone fries everything. You know, you see them going home with giant five liter jugs, one in each hand of oil. They're cooking their dinners in oil. Mm -hmm. Those people are not going to live a long time. You know, it's the diet of, like I said, steamed rice, steamed fish, and a little vegetable. Yeah, you probably live forever on that. But fewer, fewer people are eating that way now. Everyone's eating faster food. You never, you never tried the bat soup? No, I, I missed that one, unfortunately. And I looked everywhere, dude. You said but, you unfortunately. Know, once, <laughs> once it gets once it gets famous, it's hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Now, I heard about a guy who ate a bat once and he got some sort of amoeba and it's for life. He has a, a lifetime living infection in his gut. You know, there's just certain oh. things I'm not gonna jump to eat. Yeah. I was actually talking to this guy uh from Mexico recently. And he was telling me that they eat bats pretty casually um, in Mexico as well. Um, and he was saying that, you know, he's like, I, I think it was something made in the uh, whatever the conspiracy was about the lab. Uh-huh. And he was like, it's definitely something that came from the lab. And there's something that weird that's going on over there. What do you, well, you make of all of those? It. You think about it. You can eat animals. If, you're, if you find a rat in the middle of the forest... It's going to be okay. It's not eating garbage and filth. If you find a rat living in your alley, it's living on your waste and your garbage and your filth. I'm so literally one, cringing right now on the inside. Yeah, one would be okay to eat. One would be okay to eat and one would make you sick to eat. And I guess that's the same with bats or anything else. You know, I, I farm raised, raised in the wild. They're eating things that are healthy and good for them and they're not eating garbage and, and disgusting, you know, disease-ridden mosquitoes in cities. Yeah. Have you? I've eaten, I've eaten almost everything, man. I haven't had bat, but I've had dog and cat and horse and everything, oh, man. Wow. It just, it's just, it's, How are those? Food. Tasty. Yeah, what do those taste like? Yeah, what does dog taste like? <laughs> the last time I had that was in North Korea and it tasted like meat. It just had meat texture and was low in fat. Wait, what were you doing in North Korea? Yeah. Just being a tourist. It was when you could still go there and running the, the, the marathon. Or the was this marathon. from China to North Korea? No, or? that was a couple. Oh. That was two spring breaks ago. Oh, I went there. Wow. Spring break in oh, North yeah, Korea. <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to do. That's awesome. Well, because, you know, all the all the liberty craving non-mask wearers had packed the beaches in Florida. So I had to find some place to go, you know. <laughs> Um, with with the wet markets, did you actually see those? And uh, any they're other everywhere. Sort of... okay, they're so everywhere. Is Every it as bad there. as they've uh, said it to be? I mean, if you want to eat anything from squirrels to any fish you can imagine, you're going to go to a market like that, and that's where they have. That's where they parlay the live animals. And, and... are they really like laid out like that, just in front of you, display? A lot of look. I saw little puppy dogs stuffed in two cages, and I thought oh. they were all dead. And I got really close, and this one just his little face is pressed up against it. And he went, ah! and I'm like, oh shit! You know, you just have this image of letting them all free. But uh, people you should would just, just buy them all. Yeah, I'm gonna eat these for dinner, and then you just bring yeah. them. Yeah, but them people would just people would buy those things. I would pick them up and take them home and eat them. So that would be that. Wow. Wait, so so all the animals are alive at these wet markets? I, most that I would see. Yeah, I mean, some animals are processed already. 
But yeah, even big like crocodiles, man, big ones, just they got the tail, they got the mouth kind of bound and they got the little feet bound and they bring them in on big sticks and dump them there and they're thrashing around. Do they do they like um, what's the word? Like at the market or slaughter? Slaughter. Yeah. No, you take you take it home live. They're pets, Amber. (laughs) (laughs) It's yeah, it's a butcher. They're going to oh. take care of it when they rend the meat for you, when they turn it into edible. Have you ever gotten something from a wet market? I don't think anything like that. Not, I mean, I just prefer to no have that done soup. just just out of sight, you know, around the corner. <laughs> and no bat soup. It's, it's, it's still a possibility ever, for the future. Have you ever had a bat before? No, I don't think so. Not in any way. And I've eaten everything. <laughs> how did you um how did you avoid getting uh covid what are the things that you did and, and were you being like uh that cautious about it did you think you were gonna get yeah. it well now that i'm married i don't want to bring it home to my wife so yeah you just gotta you gotta focus all the time you know because like some study said you touch your face a thousand times a day and you do and you will always touch your nose and your eyes. You just got to remember when you do it now, you got to wash your hands. I would go out, just take the trash out, and I would open doors with my elbow, but there's one I have to touch with my hand. Made sure I came up and washed that hand before I touched anything else, because if you're not paranoid, if you're not thinking about it like that, you will miss You will miss corners. You will miss all kinds of things. Yeah. I think it's you- interesting that, um, you know, with your situation, not being able to trust the government but then also still right. f- following protocol to like save yourself. I feel like if more people had that sort of mentality, we wouldn't would have as lot, bad of a situation. No doubt. Just put your damn mask on when you're going outside. Maybe not when you're sitting in your house, but you're going to the 7-Eleven, you're going to the grocery store, put your damn mask on, man. It's mm. just not that hard. Yeah, people just make it out to be like, you know, it's, you have to oh, either People are drawing guns and things now. Right. Yeah. Crazy. I, I think it's funny that they're like, oh, I can't breathe in it at all. And I'm like, doctors literally wear it for hours in surgery. <laughs> like, they're wearing it's, it for eight hours straight operating on people, but you but can't But you know, those, those doctors can't be believed about stuff. All that medical school and all those brains, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, how, like they're, not, they're not even the educated. Those extra eight to ten years, like, that's right. casual. Sure. How do you, when you're navigating, you know, when you're going to different places around the world, how do you navigate, um, you know, your sort of uh, mind state of what you're going to believe, what protocols you're going to follow, and and how to be respectful without, um, you know, uh, while still being who you are and and respecting your own values? Well, you got to remember, local laws are local laws. They don't care if you respect them or not. You know, Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I flew into Indonesia, and they're like, okay, everyone, please put your tray tables up and your drink consoles and blah, blah, blah. Put your seats back in their upright position, you know, just like normal. And I'm doing my thing. And I, right in the middle of the sentence, they're like, and don't forget, flying in Indonesia with drugs is very often results in the death penalty and blah, blah, blah. blah. I was like, what the? Oh. <laughs> did you all hear that? I'm looking around at people like putting their newspapers away. I'm like, did you hear that? Did anyone else hear that besides me? You know, those are the laws that you kind of listen to because death penalty, that's that's a lasting mark on your record right there. Yeah, I think, um, you know, overall, as, as in my experience as, uh, I guess, an immigrant to this country, you know, knowing enough about um, my own culture, but then also growing up and being raised uh, in this one in the in the U.S., uh, I always think that cultural awareness is such an important thing um, because there's so many things that people just don't know about and for that reason they kind of are ignorant not to their own fault but if we learn these things whether it be in school or we're I don't know just given some sort of awareness in any other way uh, it would be helpful so for you as a teacher you know how do you uh, if you incorporate any of that kind of stuff into your teaching you know make make people aware of uh, the different types of people that there are and customs and traditions. Well, that's the thing is, you know, we're one country and, and I grew up hearing America's greatest, the greatest, the greatest. And it's from people who had really never left the country. Right. And once you do travel, I don't care how small of a place you go to, you will meet another culture. And they may have been there for thousands of years, not hundreds of years. You know, they may have been there 10 plus thousand years. And you have to respect any society that's been 
in you know existence that long and been doing things their own way you either can be the ugly american and stand in the middle of it and not see any of it and look for america where the is mcdonald's where's a cushion for me to put my big butt on right where's a sit down toilet you could be that guy or you could just immerse yourself in the new culture and experience it um, I agree. The opposite of ignorance is education. And, uh, man, I, I bring up my travels all the time. Most of the books I teach, I've been to all those places and I have photographs. And yeah, I think it definitely changes things for the better. It's just being aware of other cultures that we're you not the only one. You mentioned you? the toilet. Were you, uh, were you on the squat toilets over in China? Uh, there, everything you can imagine. Sometimes just uh, more or less a chalk hole in the ground, you know. <laughs> what do you think of it? I heard it's healthier. Uh, you know, wait till you get old. Wait till you get a little older with like old knees and sports injuries and stuff, and you got to like squat down on that thing for a little while. It, it, it gets challenging as you get older, bro. I, I think it's easy when you start at healthy or not, man. Healthy or not, I don't know. It's something about having your I, own is. I heard it. I heard it just like flushes everything out easier. It's about the posture or something. I don't Ooh, know. Well, sometimes good. you gotta. Good for you. <laughs> you, you, you keep you keep re, you keep reading your sources and, and no no and we experience it. We, have those, experience we have those it. in Pakistan. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. that's what we. I, have. I've experienced I them everywhere. Those. Yeah, okay. I honestly prefer those more than the regular toilet because I don't have to eight thousand people. It. Right, eight thousand people have been on that regular one, and there is yeah, that problem. I'd rather not That's sit. True. That's it's, true. It's, just, it's a little more hygienic. Yeah, I'm just not trying to get a picture in my head right now, Amber. Just Sorry. To... Sorry. 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 I apologize. Um, <laughs> when you usually so, go so to a new do. place, <laughs> when you go to a new place, yeah. do you first thing say, I do is um, check out the toilet. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Since, I mean, it is, it kind is of to know your yeah. situation. But um, yeah. like since since you love like literature so much and you know, the way that you actually talk about like the even the books that you teach and stuff, it's almost like personal to you. Um, at least the way that it seems that you express it. Do you like do that similarly when you go to different places? Like do you read up about them and like yeah. look at it in that same way? Because, you know, you, you go on the wrong day and you take a right instead of a left. You missed a cool little festival or, or whatever. You, researching is key for anything. And, yeah, for travel, I research months and months. But I know everything about the place when I get there. And I have primary plans and backup plans and backups to my backups. And, and so I, I, I make the most out of my time when I do go to places. Do you even uh, learn a little bit of the language, too? at least the polite stuff it's not that hard hello goodbye thank you thank you goes a million miles you know Where's excuse me you know yeah. it's good that you learn the polite stuff usually people want to just learn the cuss words and keep it moving <laughs> hey, that's a what... little bit of both keep it flexible <laughs> what's your what's your philosophy on teaching overall hmm. teaching overall I mean some of the frustrations I had in America with the unions keeping bad teachers and parents were threatening lawsuits and things over every little thing, you know, you can still find that in because, you know, in my school, kids are paying twenty, twenty five thousand dollars a year to go to school. So you're going to still have that occasional parents who, who are parent who's frustrating. Um, I think that changed my philosophy to I'm there for the ones who want to be there and the ones who are trying. There's going to be that little Bobby and that little Sally in the back row whose parents are you know what's and there's nothing you can do about them. But that's out of your control. So what's in my control? The kids who do show up and uh, trying to make them have a good attitude, and enjoy my subject. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, like with teachers, there's definitely teachers that have changed my life. I think all of us would be in that same sort of boat where just one little thing they said, a little approach that they had just totally makes you shift your mind about learning and, and what it means to learn because mm -hmm. half the time you know especially with me i was just like i hated school uh me grade too, school yeah. at least and it was like uh you know it, it just became assignments and getting work done yep same and, with me and with college when i finally got there when it was more so like these professors that were more passionate about certain subjects that's what got me passionate about it i was like wow like you know this is what learning can be like. And I felt stupid because I was like, my sister and my brother were like, you know, straight A students uh, and they were always getting great grades. And I was like, how do they 
do that but you know yeah, when you finally have a passion yeah what yeah, was you, it's, well, well i kind of want to ask like yeah. uh sometimes in school i would notice that the children that tend to have like behavioral issues used to be a little bit used to be very strict with them um and like like you had this like really cool side where you're like like literally like using different voices and like you know just being like this like dramatic like almost drama like teacher and then there was the disrespectful students that was like something that you just would not by any means tolerate and you had no mercy for them at all and i remember this one time on a field trip when you were dealing (laughs) with one of the issues you said out loud you're like i was that kid and i'm not dealing with it now so like so like what, what did you mean by that i was that kid i was that one who Boy, if you gave me an inch, I took a mile. I tested every substitute teacher. I tested every new teacher. I knew exactly how far I could go with them and how far I couldn't go with them. And when I wanted to cross that line, I was doing it willfully. I knew exactly what I was doing. I don't have time for little sons of you know what's like that in my classroom. I, 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 I find them quickly and I crush them like a bug on my windshield. I just put them down fast and hard and make them realize that is not the way to go. So is that because like you're like relating to them or are you trying to be like, I knew that these teachers couldn't handle me and I knew what they could have done to handle me. So I'm doing that now. I just don't tolerate me in the classroom. (laughs) You know, I was the worst kid. So for me up, you have to, you know, at least in my room, I have so many teachers to say, little Amber, how do you get her? She doesn't do anything in my class because I don't tolerate it. I don't tolerate it. And I get that all the time from teachers. They're like, how does little Bobby work for you? Because he knows I would kill him if he didn't work for me. He's on, he's on my last nerve as soon as he walks in the room and he knows he has to do it because I don't take it. Yeah. You didn't, yeah. I, you, I never saw somebody misbehave in your classroom. Like ever. it helped being a lot bigger than everybody too. Yeah. You're very tall. Very, very tall. So then, um, would you, what would you, I, I guess, like, why don't you sympathize with them? Because I was that little you-know-what, and I was just looking for a shortcut. I wanted to take the easiest path, and the easiest path isn't always the smartest way to go. Well, look, once you know all the ways to go, then you go ahead and take a shortcut if you want. But so what sparked out- your interest with literature then? Like, how did you get into stuff like that then? I mean, I always read as a kid, you know, I was in trouble for staying up late and reading with a flashlight under the pillow, you know bad stuff like that and you know, when you have when you enjoy something and then someone's going to pay you you know why not take the money well what's um what's next for you are you going to go back to china or are you we'll see we're torn we're looking at my wife does not want to go back and we're looking there's a lot of positions open and uh but you do want to do it in a different country yeah yeah i don't see myself teaching in the states again anytime soon that's awesome you- you expect you expressed frustration before I think on Facebook um, about Hoko teachers or at least the environment the Hoko teachers about like graduating. What's and then Hoko teaching. teachers? Howard County. That's okay. the county that I grew up in. And um, you mentioned about how there's teachers who go straight from college to teaching immediately mm-hmm. with li- with literal no life experience and how right. much that frustrated you. Why was that? Well, because, you know, think about it. Just because you went to high school doesn't mean, and you took biology class doesn't mean you're ready to be a mom or a dad just because you took one unit about it. Uh, There's a couple things you should experience for yourself if you're lucky before you go on to bigger responsibilities. Teaching, you know, they teach you in a book. You read a book on how to be a teacher. It's so different when you stand up in front of your first class. You kind of, you know got to figure that out yourself who what kind of teacher you are and how you, what's the best way to deliver information and that sort of thing what made you want to you know have these life experiences and travel and all of that um you know especially growing up with what you described as like you know america first and all of that yeah i, I mean i just i was always attracted to travel and i feel i'm kind of lucky because once like my 20th year traveling in mongolia i met these teachers and i said well, where do you teach and they go here in mongolia I said, what? You speak Mongolian? They're like, no, we're in an American school. I mean, I'd never heard of this. Hmm. And I went home and looked it up, and within three weeks, I'd put my resignation in. So, I mean, I'd always (laughs) been working extra jobs and saving my money to travel in the summer. Well, now I live in cool places. 
Yeah. And I'm still doing the same job, making more or less the same income. But now I get to live in a culture and uh, really explore it. It's one thing to visit Beijing for a week. It's another thing to live in China for a year and you can visit the region you're in every weekend and week after week. What are some uh, countries that are still on your bucket list that you want to like teach at or teach at or even visit? There's visit, been there's yeah. a couple. God, there's only a handful though. I mean, for me, the state of Alaska. I haven't got to the state of Alaska yet, and Greenland. I want to do some some snow cave, cave camping up in Greenland. There's not much else to do up there. Pakistan. Oh, of course, Pakistan, dude. <laughs> That's a food paradise. I'm a food guy, too. Well, what kind of food do you like from South Asia? From South Asia, I like food that I can recognize, you know, not the head so much and the feet and the wings and things, but uh, the actual edible parts, fewer bones. But I love spicy food, so I'm, I'm set to Southeast Asia. You like naan? I like, well, who doesn't like naan? I make a great <laughs> pizza out of naan. Okay. That's, that's true. Wait, you said nice you left a bunch of stuff in China. If you don't go back to China, what are you going to do with all that stuff? Well, you, you move on with your life. You learn that you, you don't. Uh, I brought home the valuable things, and uh, there's things that you just got to understand you're going to have to replace when you move. You're not taking your mop with you when you move to a new continent. Right. You're going to need to buy a new mop. You know, it just doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't fit in the overhead bin. Yeah, but you left your laptop. Well, that got left at a at a freaking airport. They wanted to scan it to make sure it wasn't a spy, and they said they needed thirty minutes. But I only had twenty oh. minutes till my plane, and I waited ten minutes, and they hadn't even sent it back. So, uh, yeah, that's how you got to be, though. Like, just be able to make the move and, at that and point, drop everything I mean, and keep it going. Exactly. At that point, I was like, "Well, I guess I'm giving up my laptop." And you have to make that decision. Wow. And that's not an easy one. That was yeah. A tough I wouldn't one, be but, able to uh, do that. I would miss my flight. Yeah. Well, like, it depends if you knew when your next one was going to be. My next one wasn't yeah, going to be true. for a week. Yeah. And I wanted to get home. Of course, I didn't know I was going to do a two week quarantine in Hong Kong. Damn it. That still angers right. me. Can, yeah. we, uh, can you talk about your like, like travels back? Because you got pushed into a much longer travel back. Yeah, I tried to get back on the 25th, then the 26th, then the 28th, then the 29th, then the 30th. Finally, that flight was supposed to be to Hong Kong, to Korea, to Detroit, to Cleveland. But Hong Kong pulled us off and put us in a two-week quarantine. Mm -hmm. So I got to spend two weeks in a quarantine house in a hotel in Hong Kong, and that sucked. What did they do? They uh, provide that for you, or do you have to do that yourself? They did. That. They wanted me to do it by myself, but I mm -hmm. refused. I refused to leave the airport. They hadn't processed my paperwork, and I was like, "I will stay in this airport for fourteen days, and I will make your life hell. I will be the worst <laughs> human being you've ever met in your life." And then they finally offered me the hotel. And the three meals a day. That's awesome. Wow. That's that's good. It's, it's good not good. Fine. I would have rather been home, but you know. No, I mean, I mean, having a strong persona to be like, hey, like, oh yeah, do what I want. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'm not. Leaving. I guess being tall also helps when you're in China. You're probably like yeah. double the size Tower. compared to everyone. Tower. 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 They, all, <laughs> He's like, Tower. they all come up to my. They all come up to my waist. I feel like patting them all on the head. What? How tall are you? <laughs> six six. Oh wow. oh wow, you're you're NBA yeah. level. Jeez, can you go on roller wow. coasters at that height? <laughs> you have to be careful, man, because you can lose the top head right there. And just boom. oh wow, it's like doorways. That's crazy. You got to look down and look up at the same time. Um, as we as we try to uh, wrap this up soon, what can people yeah. uh, learn from your experiences? What would you say to people that are listening, especially uh, young Americans? Give it to them, just, say. Well, I'm not going to give them to anything. I'm just saying, you know, yes, you're Americans, and that's fantastic. And, and with that power, you, you can do a lot of things. You can start a grassroots movement and get a politician out of office. You can change legislation. You can do a lot of things as an American. Um, but and remember that you're not, you're not the only American. And, you know, my mom is in her 80s, and a lot of people are weak and vulnerable right now. And you are tough, and you are... Uh, a young American and you can do anything you want. Well, one thing I wish you would do is wear a mask and, and practice a little social distancing until we can get a vaccine or until get this behind us because it, it really is killing people in a horrible way. And that just seems kind of selfish. Yeah. 
Well, one, Mr. Shea, I want to say I'm glad that you're here with us and that you're Me able too. to talk about this. Um, Me too. And, and you're back with your family and all of that. And two, I want to say thank you for being such an incredible teacher that incorporates your ex life experiences in other cultures because again like i can't emphasize enough how important that was to me and everyone that i know that has just grown and and is so mature in the way that they deal with people so uh i and we appreciate you for being that type of a teacher yeah, yeah. Thank you. absolutely thank <laughs> even you so if, much even if uh you know amber doesn't yeah well she was a problem <laughs> child you you guys were my favorite kids in class the girl was always a problem <laughs> Honestly, though, like, what, how was I like in school? Just real quick. You were great. You were fine. You have, you were a sweet girl. I was quiet, right? I was. Yeah, like, really, you were really... you were quietish. I, oh, I, I had, make people talk. I had a I had a, a, a one last question I want to ask. What did you think of? Uh... <laughs> Shit. Oh, there goes your iPad. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're good. Um, I was gonna ask, what did you think of uh, the whole Black Lives Matter movement going on while you were uh, over there? And did, did that uh, pour into China at all? Again, we didn't get a lot of the news because any news that shows you're going against authority doesn't fly in China. They don't want you getting those ideas in your head that, hey, maybe your rights are better than the rights of the majority of people. You know, BLM, it's 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 been waiting a long time. Something had to happen when you think about, it. I mean, I was born in the sixties and I grew up in the seventies and the eighties, but in Columbia, and if you knew Columbia, Maryland, where I went to high school, Wild Lake and where I taught at Oakland Mills, we were considered the inner city schools. And, um, we just didn't have a lot of the problems that most people seem to have, mm -hmm. but boy, America had problems and still does. And I don't know where else you can get just pulled over for driving the wrong car or driving the car in the wrong neighborhood or shopping in the wrong store or whatever. It just, you know, it's a great wrong. And the pendulum has swung the other way and it's trying to make this great wrong into a great right. And we'll see how it ends up. And it ended up working out that, you know, one of the things with the pandemic, it was like everyone was at home. They, uh, a lot of people lost their jobs and it was kind of like that perfect timing. So, you yeah. know, for Americans, put your as, you put your focus on it. Yeah, exactly. So that's good. Well, uh, unless, again, unless something has a direct impact on someone, most yeah. Americans, unless it has a real direct impact on their lives, they, they let it go right over. Or, yeah. or, or direct impact on their timelines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, again, thank you uh, for being here with us. But uh, this pleasure. is our podcast called Strange Flavors. And at the end of this podcast, we ask our strangers one last question. So. Amber, if you want to do the honors and ask him that. Uh -oh. Sure. If you could describe yourself as any flavor, what flavor would it be and why? Ooh, I would say like some exotic meat like dragon or lion and really spicy. Okay, <laughs> spicy really dragon spicy. meat? Yeah, why? yeah, something. Well, I mean, dragon, I would assume, is probably a protected creature and we probably should not eat it. But let's pretend there's just enough out there. It's exotic. It's hard to come by. It, it probably you got to burn a few calories to bring that thing down, you know, and get it into the <laughs> kitchen. I, you know, I see myself out there with a club and my, my axe and then going out and getting my dragon meat. And spicy because, you know, if your choice is spicy or bland, I, I don't see that as being a choice. That's incredible. That was that was the most wow. fiery answer we've ever had. Yeah, well, I love it. Damn, <laughs> spicy have, dragon meat. Yeah, spicy, spicy dragon. dragon meat. Do you have a blog or anything that anyone can follow, or anything that you'd like to promote? I'm I'm 55, son. I don't do that stuff. Like that. <laughs> I think you should. I, don't, I, don't I think do you should have a blog. Stuff. Yeah, I you would. You, should, you yeah. would thrive in that world. Like, okay. Just by people <laughs> following your uh, your adventures and your experiences, like it would be just. I don't know. You you like literature, so maybe you would write down something um, every now and then, awesome. and then share it. But would, hey. you, would you would you be on my blog? Yeah, I mean, you came on our podcast, okay. so okay. <laughs> then, then then maybe we'll see. Let's do it. Um, well, uh, you can't follow him anywhere, but people, please listen to Mr. Shane what he has to say. <laughs> he has the firsthand experience. Maybe attend um, a school or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, he, he needs to start a Zoom school and oh. uh, everyone can <laughs> graduate from there. Um, thank you, Mr. Shea, for joining us uh, on Strange Thanks, Flavors. Guys. And for everybody listening, it's been another week. Another flavor. A little less stranger. We'll talk to you next time.